Welcome kids to the third video on trigonometry. Now we're going to learn two special right triangles whose ratios uh, it would be very useful for you to know. The first is called the 45, 45, 90 triangle. It is also known as the right isosceles triangle. Okay. Now, this triangle that I've drawn below is a right isosceles triangle. This angle is 90, and these two sides have the same length, and this angle is 45, and so is this angle. In a right isosceles triangle, uh, the situation is very simple. Because these two sides have the same length, so basically, if this has a length of 1, then this will also have a length of 1. And then the hypotenuse in that case will have a length of under root 2. So the ratio of sides in a 45-45-90 triangle is 1 over 3. Now how do we apply this rule? That's quite simple. Let's assume that this side has a length of x. Then the base will also have a length of x. And the hypotenuse will have a length of x times under root 2. OK? For example, this side has a length, let's say, 8. Then the base will also have a length of 8 and the hypotenuse will have a length of 8 times under root 2. Okay, remember, it's always x, x, and x times under root 2. Okay, now you should try this other question. Let's say if I tell you that this side, the base, has a length of 10, then what will be the length of the other side, the pentacular side, and the hypotenuse? Think about it. Okay, because this base is a length of 10 and it's a right isosceles triangle, the other leg of the right triangle, which is a perpendicular, will also have a length of 10. And the hypotenuse will have a length of 10 multiplied by under root 2. Now, what if I told you that the length of the hypotenuse was... 7 times under root 2. Then what do you think would be the lengths of the two legs of the right triangle? Now, to figure out the length of the base, we know that if the length of the base is x, the hypotenuse is x multiplied by root 2. So to go from the base to the hypotenuse, we always multiply by under root 2, which means that to come back from the hypotenuse to the base, you'll have to divide by under root 2. So what's 7 root 2 divided by root 2? Well, this is equal to 7. So therefore, the base will be equal to 7. And therefore, the perpendicular will also be equal to 7. So what if I told you that the hypotenuse has a length of 8, and you were asked to figure out the length of the base? How would you do this? Well, again, as you remember, that to go from the base to the hypotenuse, we had multiplied by root 2. So to come back from the hypotenuse to the base, we would now have to divide by under root 2. So the answer would be 8 divided by under root 2. And if you want to rationalize 8 upon under root 2, you just have to multiply it by root 2 over root 2, and you would get 8 root 2 divided by root 2 into root 2 gives you 2. And if you cancel this out, you get two ones are and two fours are. So the answer would be four times 
root 2. So the base is equal to 8 divided by root 2 and it can also be written as 4 multiplied by root 2. And the, and the perpendicular would also be 4 multiplied by under root 2. If you ever forget the ratio, remember you can always apply the Pythagoras theorem because you know that the two legs uh, of the right triangle both have the same length. So for example, if the length of the base is x, then the length of the height or the perpendicular is also x, and the hypotenuse, if you forget this, let's call this c, and apply the Pythagoras theorem, so a square plus b square equals c square, a is x, so x square, and b is also x, so another, I'm sorry, x square is equal to c square x square plus x square becomes 2x square is equal to c square so therefore c will be equal to under root of 2x square uh, x square can come outside of the square root like a simple x but the, the 2 will stay inside the square root so you get c is equal to x times root 2 and we remember that the ratio in a 45-45-90 triangle is always x is to x is to x under root 2 The next important special right triangle is known as the 30-60-90 triangle. As the name suggests, one of the angles is equal to 30 degrees, the second is equal to 60 degrees, and the third is equal to 90 degrees. Now, in this particular triangle, the ratio of sides is as follows. The side of the 30 degrees, which is this one, we assume that to have the smallest, this, this will always have the smallest length. Let's say that this has a length of 1. And the side opposite 90, which is the hypotenuse, will always be double of that. So that will always be equal to 2. Just remember that. In the 30, 60, 90 triangle, if the side opposite 30 degrees has a length of 1, then the hypotenuse will always have a length of 2. And the side opposite 60 degrees will always have a length of under root 3. So in the 30, 60, 90 triangle, the ratio of sides is 1 is to root 3 is to 2. Or you can write this as x, x under root 3, and 2x. The easiest way of remembering this is to always make sure that you remember that the longest side, which is the hypotenuse, is twice of the shortest side. But this happens in only a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Okay? So let's try an example based on this idea. Okay? Let's say that the side opposite 30 degrees has a length of 6. Then what will be the length of the hypotenuse? Well, remember that the hypotenuse is always twice as long as the side opposite 30 degrees is. So therefore, it's going to have a length of 12. And what about the side opposite 60 degrees? This one. Remember, the side opposite 60 degrees is basically equal to under root 3 times the side opposite 30 degrees, which is the smaller side. So therefore, if this is 6, this has to be 6 multiplied by under root 3. Now let's say that I tell you that the hypotenuse has a length of 18. So what should be the length of the side opposite 30 degrees? Well, we know that the hypotenuse is always twice as long as the side opposite 30 degrees. So therefore, if I were to divide the hypotenuse by 2, I'd get this length. So 18 upon 2 gives me 9. So that's, that is the length of the side opposite the 30 degrees. And the side opposite 60 degrees, which is the base, that would be 9 times under root 3. Now let's say that I tell you that the side opposite 60 degrees is equal to 5 times under root 3. So what do you think this side, the perpendicular side, would be equal to? 
Now, you know that to go from here to here, we multiply by root 3. So in order to come back here, we will have to divide by root 3. So if I divide 5 under root 3 by under root 3, I'd get a 5. So then this would be equal to 5. And if I know that the shortest side is 5, the longest side would be twice of 5, so that's going to be 5 times 2, that is 10. Now go ahead and try the following question. Let's say that the side opposite 60 degrees is equal to 15 times under root 3. I want you to now figure out the lengths of these two sides. So the answer is, if this is 15 under root 3, this has to be 15 under root 3 divided by under root 3, and that gives you 15. So this here is 15. And if the smallest side is 15, the longest side will be twice of that, so that has to be 30. I hope these special right triangles are clear to you. See you in the next video.